My name is uh, Tony Spagnolo, and I run sales at Rescale. And when, when we were planning the Rescale night, we asked the question, who do we have as a keynote? And we all simultaneously said, boom. Now, why did we say boom? Let me, let me put it to you this way. How many of you have been to the National Space and Air Museum outside Dulles Airport? Anybody been there? So what do you, when you come in on the first floor, what are you looking at? You're looking at three legendary spacecraft and aircraft. In the front of you is the shuttle. To the left is the Concorde. To the right, the SR-71. And behind that SR-71, there's a nice big open space. My belief is, in 30 years, that'll be a boom aircraft in that space. So with that introduction, let me introduce Josh Kral from Boom Technologies. Thank you. How's it going? I'm uh, happy to be here. I'm, I'm delighted to be here, actually. Uh, I hope that it's a little less than 30 years, but we'll, we'll do our best. Uh, so, so yeah, I'm, I'm um, Josh Kral. I'm here. I'm the, the CTO of Boom Supersonic. And, uh, I want to talk to you a little bit about Boom's story and sort of um, how Rescale's kind of been a game changer for us as a startup aerospace company. So we, we spend a lot of time at Boom sort of thinking about what, what happens in this top corner of the slide. You know, how do, we, how do we make air travel faster and how do we expand human capability um, and, you know, just really enable faster transportation. Um, and to, to better, you know, understand the value of speed, we sort of have to look back in history a bit and think about what it was like in the, the propeller airplane era. You know, New York to London was 18 hours. So not many people took an overseas trip, right? I mean, if, if it takes a long time to get somewhere, you, you don't go. Um, and, and uh, you know, it's not just about how long it takes to get there. It's also about what, what kinds of experiences speed kind of enables. So, you know, there was no baseball west of the Mississippi. Uh, there was no such thing as a, as a world tour for music. If you had a, a long-distance relationship and it, you, you know, with someone in another city, uh, good luck with that. Uh, you know, and, and then the jet age kind of changed all that, right? I mean, the, the jets came about, and, and, um, and it really uh, opened up the world and made, made cities more accessible, made continents more accessible. The Beatles took the first world tour in 1964. And then supersonics were supposed to be next. You know, uh, they were supposed to be to the, the, the jet airplane what the jet airplane was to the propeller airplane. And, of course, we had Concorde, and as, as you mentioned. It, it's a museum piece now. And, you know, part, part of the problem with Concorde was it, was it was an economic failure. I mean, the ticket prices at $20,000 round trip, you, you know, it was a bucket list item for many people. And so uh, it became a museum piece. It, it, it had 26 years in service, but it wasn't a viable sort of business. It, it was a gas guzzler uh, at 100 seats. You couldn't, you couldn't fill the airplane on most routes. It was really only profitable on one route. And, uh, and you know, this is sort of a death spiral for the, for the possibility of making supersonics a viable, uh, you know, game-changer airplane. But today, you know, 50 years later, we have modern engines, modern aerodynamics, different materials, and that enables us to design an airplane that's dramatically more efficient. And that, that's kind of a game changer for, for airlines because if you look at an airline, um, the front 10% of the seats make up most of the profit uh, from, from that airplane. Um, substantial part of the revenue and most of the profit. So what we're, what we're doing at Boom right now is sort of, the idea is kind of take that front 10% of the airplane and make it go really fast. And uh, if you can do that, then this becomes something that is viable uh, for a whole bunch of routes. Uh, this, is, uh, this is the airplane we're proposing. It's a, it's a 45 to 50 seat premium experience airplane, mostly sort of like a first class seat. Um, you, you know, one, uh, one seat on, e on each side of the aisle. So you have an aisle and a window seat. Uh, 2.6 times faster than anything you can get from Boeing or Airbus today. And then um, it's just, you know, most importantly, it's profitable. And if you look at a, a global route map, we can fly 500 routes profitably uh, compared to the one route that the Concorde could. So, you know, we had a, a, 
of a sort of well-respected industry forecaster, the Boyd, Boyd Group, take a look at this, and they predicted 1,300 airplanes over 10 years, which is bigger than the 787. So this isn't this isn't a niche airplane anymore. This is something that could really revol revolutionize travel. So there she is. Uh, this is what we what we imagine the future of air travel to be, but it's not really the right thing for a startup to work on. I mean, we're we're a small company right now. Um, to jump all the way to this as our first design would be very challenging. So instead, we're working on what we call the XB1 supersonic demonstrator. This is a, uh, a subscale prototype. It's about one third the size, so uh, 65 feet long. Looks kind of like an elongated fighter jet, but it has the same wing design, same propulsion inlet design, um, and the same high temperature composite airframe. So that's the XB1. We made, a, we made a short video to sort of talk about the, the last two years of engineering that's been going into this airplane. To accomplish our goal of affordable supersonic travel, we challenged our engineering team to create a design at least 30% more efficient than Concorde. Concorde was designed 50 years ago, and its creators didn't have the technology for efficient supersonic flight. But today, we have better aerodynamics, materials, and engines. We've been working for the last two and a half years on a revolutionary new supersonic design. Concorde's designers worked in wind tunnels, where each iteration takes months, and only a few designs can be tested. We work in virtual wind tunnels and have already run over a thousand simulated wind tunnel tests, allowing us to produce a refined design, a breakthrough in supersonic efficiency. First is a concept called area ruling, a dynamically shaped fuselage that minimizes cross-sectional area with a gentle tapering in the aft cabin. This minimizes disturbances to the surrounding air, reducing drag. The number two feature is called a chine. The chine is like a little wing that extends all the way up to the nose. And what the chine does on our airplane, on a commercial aircraft for the first time, is help create natural balance throughout a wide range of speeds. Lastly, we refine the traditional delta wing design with high efficiency airfoils and a swept trailing edge that reduces drag and helps quiet the sonic boom. Today, we have the benefit of advanced materials. Carbon fiber composites allow us to realize the aerodynamic design with a strong, lightweight structure. To create a carbon fiber part, we first start with a high precision mold, either CNC machined or 3D printed. We then apply layer after layer of carbon fabric and resin to the mold. Finally, each part is cured in an oven or autoclave under vacuum at temperatures of up to 450 degrees Fahrenheit. Cruising at 1,451 miles per hour, the nose and leading edges of the aircraft can reach temperatures of up to 307 degrees Fahrenheit. These carbon parts outperform aluminum at the high temperatures of supersonic flight. Our aircraft needs a propulsion system that's powerful enough for Mach 2.2 flight, yet is also quiet and efficient. The propulsion system is composed of a variable geometry intake system and an efficient turbofan jet engine. The intake is like an adapter for supersonic flight. An intricate three-dimensional control surface creates shock waves that slow the air down to the ideal speed for the engine. Our engine is based on the same technology that powers modern subsonic aircraft, but with a customized fan and a variable geometry exhaust. Lastly, we use three engines for added reliability and safety. Two engines are under the wing, and a third is in the tail, with a unique bifurcated inlet that is both efficient and beautiful. For the last two and a half years, we've been working quietly on the design. Finally, the engineering is complete and we have started the build process. In just over a year, our first airplane will be ready for flight. Okay, so that gives you a little hint of what's been going on behind the scenes in our offices in Denver. Um, so what, what does this have to do with Rescale and HPC and Big Compute? Um, I, I think, you know, as you saw, we're relying on some, some really important and, and um, major aerodynamic advances to make the XB-1 and our production airliner uh, more efficient than Concorde. And uh, I just want to show you a picture of our server infrastructure. Um, so uh, <laughs> uh, it's, it's the one on the, uh, over here. Um, yeah, so uh, we, we recently built out a lobby space in our, in our offices and we, we uh, demolished the server room that had that rack. Uh, and it ended up in the, the men's bathroom. Um, 
that's kind of the most startupy thing about us, I think. <laughs> but uh, in all seriousness, you know, I show this photo because I want to drive home the difference between aerospace design today and, and what it was like, you know, maybe 10 years ago. Um, so here's some pictures of some of our computational fluid dynamics work, um, or, or CFD. You know, so, so these are um, uh, Navier-Stokes unstructured uh, simulations of one of the corners of our flight envelope where um, XB1 is, is, uh, is experiencing what we call vortex lift. And, and s simulating the, these sort of tight vortices over the wings is, is um, pretty computationally expensive. And uh, it requires simulation meshes with 200 million cells or, or more in some of the simulations. And um, they can run from minutes to hours, depending on the complexity. And we often want to run sort of whole parameterized design sweeps where we, where we manipulate the design space and, and explore uh, different you know, geometry changes. And in, in addition to these external aero challenges, we also have inlet design, which, um, so this is a slice through the center of our inlet. A supersonic inlet is sort of designed to slow down the air so that it's at the right temperature and pressure um, and speed for the jet engine. And um, so we're looking at Mach numbers in the top one here, and then at the bottom we're looking at pressure recovery in, in uh, the inlet and, and uh, engine phases. Uh, but, and yet, we only have a, a very small aero team right now. I mean, these, these two uh, aerodynamicists, this is Marshall Gussman in the top and, and Kenrick Waith in the, in the bottom right, um, they do the majority of our simulation, and, uh, and it just drives home that, that if you have really talented engineers with experience in the domain, and you give them the right software and the right compute resources, you can actually accomplish quite a lot compared to uh, sort of the traditional way of working. So when, when people ask me about Rescale, and I often tell them sort of, uh, I like to think of it as, as, you know, we let our engineers ask what kind of supercomputer do they want today? Um, and in fact, they can sort of ask that on every job they submit to Rescale. So depending on the complexity of the job or how fast they want the result, how much money they want to pay, they can dial in exactly how much compute resources they have and, and uh, get a result quite, quite efficiently. This is an example of some aero database plots that we've created where every one of these dots is a, is a simulation that may have taken you know, an hour or so on 100 cores or something like that. And uh, so we'll run a sweep like this and and sort of on demand be able to grab all the compute capacity to get this error database built. And uh, we don't have to think anything about IT or how to, uh, how to manage all that data. You know, traditionally you would have to have a team of people sort of, you know, uh, collecting all the data, collating it, validating it, checking it, putting it in the right places, et cetera. And, uh, or, or you'd have to write, have a software team write all that scripting to automate this process. And we were able to skip all that because of Rescale. So CFD pictures are kind of cool, but wind tunnels are cooler. So I thought I'd show a quick little video of what, what we're really simulating here. So this is this is what we've been up to at Boom, and, and obviously um, it's a tremendous amount of work from our from our engineering team, and and obviously uh, tons of simulations on Rescale to get us to this point where we can validate in a wind tunnel and confirm that our simulations are actually doing what they're supposed to. So uh, these are our two airplanes. We're, we're hard at work on the first one, and and it's fully funded, and we're we're just beginning to to begin manufacturing on it. And I want to just sort of take a step back and think a little bit about what you know, why we're doing this and what it how, how it matters to the world. So New York to London, 
can be three and a half hours or so. And that, that's, um, that's like taking an early morning flight out of New York. You, you're in London, downtown London by mid-afternoon or early afternoon. Uh, you can have some business meetings. You can go to dinner and then catch the last flight of the day back and be home in time to tuck your kids into bed. San Francisco to Tokyo is five hours, 24 minutes. Pretty meaningful difference there. And then San Francisco to Singapore, seven hours, 31 minutes. The, you know, yeah, it's, it's uh, half, the, half the time, but it's also days off of your trip. I mean, you can leave here and be on a completely different sleep schedule than uh, you would today where you basically have to try to get, you know, the best lay flat bed experience you can on an airplane and get a bunch of crappy sleep and then hope that, hope that you're fresh enough to have your important business meeting the next day. So we, I just want to leave you with a, a sort of video we made that kind of drives home why this is important to us. The pursuit of speed is often relegated to the adrenaline seekers, the risk takers, the record breakers. But our pursuit of speed is about something greater. It's speed in service of the experiences that make life precious. Imagine, if you will, flying across the Atlantic, doing business, and being home in time to tuck your children into bed, or where New Zealand becomes as accessible as New York. What would that do for families, for culture, for business? The technology for supersonic flight has existed for over 50 years. This is the new supersonic airline. But it was too expensive for routine travel. At Boom, we are refining it, perfecting it, so that high-speed travel can be available to anyone. In the digital age, there really is no more distance. There is only time, time from one another. Our mission is to remove that barrier, meaning more meetings in a day and more nights with loved ones, where children grow up with their parents at home and where relationships are no longer considered long distance. We see New York to London in three hours instead of seven. San Francisco to Tokyo in five hours instead of 11. We see world leaders spending more time in the same room, the acceptance of cultures and the spreading of ideas. At Boom, we see the time saved as really the least important part. This isn't about time saved, it's about life gained. Together, we can make cities into neighborhoods and make the world a smaller place. Boom. The future is supersonic. Okay, so I, I hope that sort of drives home why, why it matters to us and, and why some of this amazing technology that the, the folks here at Rescale have been working on really matters. And, and uh, you know, this is just a picture of some, some of our team out in Denver. Um, we have some of the best aerospace minds in the world working on this problem. And, and uh, you know, if this is something that inspires you, please come talk to me. You know, we're going to be uh, hiring like crazy lately. So, uh, you know, I, I want to hear from you. And that's it. Um, I really appreciate the opportunity to, to talk to you guys. Um, you know, we're huge fans of Rescale, uh, and we wouldn't be where we are today without them. So thanks a lot.